nations across the globe have battled in 10 stunning destinations on race tracks like no other. And now it all comes down to this. Struggling with adversity is what Sir Ben Ainsley does best. Can the Brits make it count at the final round? Della Pierre will have to fight off his idol, Ben Ainsley, as it's a one on one for the last spot into the final. With three event wins this season, Burling has answered his critics, but can he beat his old rival in the green and gold and take the championship? Burling, Ainsley, and Della Pierre will have to push their crews to the limit to stop the Australians from taking the title again. Welcome to the final. This is Sail GP. The time has come to decide the top team of the year, the Sail GP Season 3 champions. Welcome to the scenic San Francisco Bay for the Mubudla Sail GP Season 3 Grand Final. With six races, the forecast for the weekend looks to be ideal racing conditions. Three races today and two more tomorrow will decide the U.S. event champion and the final three teams to fight for the winner-take-all grand finale, the season three championship, and the $1 million prize. Alongside two-time Olympian Stevie Morrison and former world champion Emily Nagel and Olympic silver medalist Lisa Darmanin, I'm Todd Harris, and here's how it all unfolds on the Pacific. This weekend, there is no denying that all eyes are on the million dollar prize and the claim for the season three championship title. But first, we have to race five fleet races for the Mubudla United States Sail Grand Prix and add those overall results to the season championship points. Then, only the top three teams in the season championship will race in a three-boat, single-race final Let's go. where the winner takes all. The Sail GP Season 3 Championship and $1 million. So let's have a look at season three standings after 10 events. It is Australia, the two-time reigning and defending champions on top with 84 points. New Zealand sits at second. And here's where it gets interesting. France sits on 69 points. Emirates GBR one point back on 68. Then it's Denmark, Canada, United States, Switzerland, Spain bringing up the rear. And the practice so far has been sensational. All nine teams were back out on the water yesterday here in San Francisco. And the top four teams were seriously pushing hard straight out of the blocks. There were some impressive starts from Emirates, GBR and New Zealand, particularly important as that was previously a big weakness of Emirates. Yeah, and it didn't half lead to some close racing out there, Emily. They were pushing hard, both those teams. Burling here getting his match race head on. Could be a bit of a dress rehearsal for the grand final tomorrow. We'll see. And all the teams were pushing hard, but of course they find out those F50s, if you push too hard, they bite back pretty quick and you get wet. So those teams are testing the limits, and that was all the way through the fleet. Great shots here from the camera sponsored by T-Mobile 5G on board Australia. And we see Kinley Fowler on the right-hand side of the screen there, near miss. Slight early turn from Slingsby. Even the best get it wrong sometimes. Emirates were my boat of the day yesterday, but that does mean the French have a bit to work on if they still want a chance for the final. Well, just minutes to go until the start of the first race of the day. The fans getting into position and the crews in their final warm-ups with Australia, the only team confirmed for the grand final and the $1 million payday. It's Australia that claims the title in 2022. Tom Slingsby is untouchable. Nobody has come close to his success in Sail GP. He's come into San Francisco, holding his ticket to the grand final early. They have dominated this season. In their eyes, though, it's not been a perfect season. Oh, my word! They've had to fight hard. Slingsby has orchestrated epic comebacks, scraping into an event finals time and time again. The inside goes to Slingsby. What a sense of timing that man has. This is why he's so far ahead on points. Tom's always been a fierce competitor with a killer instinct from a young age in any sport he tried. Some say the team around him give him the edge. Or is there just something about Tom that you can't put your finger on? 
To make it three series wins in a row would be an outrageous record amongst the level of talent here in Sale GP. Let's get going. Tom Slingsby, the disruptor. Second place New Zealand just need to stay out of trouble and finish fifth to qualify for the final penalties through the season have kept them from qualifying already. They do not want to fall foul of the umpire today, but this is very doable for the Kiwis. The real rivalry coming up will be for third place with just one point separating the teams, Great Britain and France, and this will be a dogfight. For each to qualify for the grand final, it's simple, finish in front of the other. In one corner, you've got the veteran Ainsley, in the other corner, Delapierre. Delapierre knows that Ainsley is coming for him. He has to beat him for a chance of making the grand final. Ainsley tried to take out France at the last event. One point separates them. So aggressive by Ainsley. Who will hunt who? going to be extraordinary. Everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. You have to attack. It's always going to be tough. What are you going to do if he comes hunting for you? I'm not scared of Ben and Slip. You know, the spark's going to fly, that's for sure. Are you uh, we are here to win the Grand Prix. Sometimes you have to take someone out to, to take the win. He will be under pressure for sure. Well, we're going to find out pretty soon. So to summarize the race to qualify for the season grand final, two-time reigning and defending Australia have led throughout the season and have already qualified for the final race for the third season in a row. Second place New Zealand need to finish fifth or better to guarantee their spot. Third place France must finish ahead of Emirates Team Great Britain and Emirates GBR must finish ahead of France to take their place. But that lies ahead. First, let's get ready for the first race with Olympic silver medalist Lisa Darmanin out on the race course on the San Francisco Bay. It is tremendous to be back on San Francisco Bay and the winds are looking phenomenal for this weekend. Winds are expected around 22 kilometers per hour, gusting to 30 kilometers per hour from the west. So it's funneling under that famous Golden Gate Bridge. The wind is also meant to build throughout the afternoon, so the athletes will have to adapt to that. As well as the wind, there is plenty of tide here. It's ebbing, which means it's running out. And wind against tide, that's the perfect recipe for choppy seas. It's going to be a tough day out here for the flight controllers as they manage this building sea state. The wind is quite gusty at the moment and, and super changeable, which tells me it's an open course and there's plenty of opportunities for overtaking today. All right, thank you, Lisa. So settle in, folks, with just a couple of minutes to the first of five races to decide the event champion and the top three on the season overall standings and who will go into tomorrow's season three grand final. So can Australia make it three championships in a row? Can their traditional rivals, New Zealand, knock them off their perch? And can France, who finished last in previous season, hold off Great Britain and provide the big upset? Or will the best Olympic yachtsman, Ben Ainsley, and Team GBR get their first win of the season here in San Francisco, California, and Sail GP? Well, precision in the pre-starts, the key to hitting the line at full speed. And then it's just a sprint to Mark 1. At Mark 1, we see the first split in the fleet as the crews sail off in different directions, trying to find the side of the course that they think will give them the quickest time to gate 2. At the gate, they've got a big choice to make as they can turn left or right. And let's remember that sailboats only sail fast when they're sailing at an angle to the wind, so we see them zigzag their way around the course, trying to find those darker patches of stronger wind. For the boats ahead, they get their pick of the action and can choose the perfect course. For the boats behind, well, they're going to get a second choice on things, which often might see them split off in different directions, hoping to overtake. It's going to come down to accuracy of manoeuvres and how hard you're willing to push your F50. But if you can find the limit, you'll be the boat finishing fast under the fans on the shoreline there. And a unique feature of this race course here in San Francisco is there's a strong tidal flow. At the tide of racing, the tide is on the change. So the crews have got plenty to think about out there today. Opportunity aplenty. 
Near capacity crowd here in San Francisco on a cloudy day, but we are under two and a half minutes to go until the racing begins here at the Mubudla Sale GP Season 3 Grand Final San Francisco as we bring down the curtain on Season 3 of Sale GP Racing. So 2.10 to go before the start of race number one. Emily, start with you. Where do you want to be from what we saw in practice yesterday? Where do you think the sweet spot is in that start box? I think the main thing that all the teams are going to be looking for are all the gusts of pressure. What we've seen with this race course is there's some really big holes which can make it difficult to get up on the foil and accelerate in time for the start. All right, Stevie, take us through it with 147, 146 now to go. Where does everyone want to be? Well, I don't know, but I wonder how that man at the back of the boat there, Contant de la Pierre, the driver on board the French boat, is going to be feeling. Is Ben Ainsley going to do anything in the last minute here? We can see in the middle of our scheme, France, they've just turned to the left away. Ainsley in the red boat, just below him, he's very focused already on that French boat. Clearly, Ainsley's got something special lined up for the French here. If I was Contant, I'd just be trying to find some space now to get that French boat up and foiling fast. As we can see, Australia, they're breaking away. They're in their few minutes now before the start and it's vital moments here great britain and france already locked together here disruption techniques from ainsley So here we go, 46 seconds to go before the start of race number one in the Sail GP season three finale. Well, and Ainsley on board Great Britain there. He's late into the box. He's chasing the French boat down in the pre-start. Aggressive tactics from the British boat on the right-hand side of our screen, but it's Denmark and Canada pretty much only playing for a little weight race win themselves here. They're lined up well in a good position, and it's all about timing now with 24 seconds to go. Australia. Denmark and Canada are in a great position now and Jimmy Spiddle, he needs to perform on board that US boat. He's looking for his timing. France and Great Britain are out the back along with New Zealand. These big contenders are going to be disappointed. Watch for the timing in the middle of the line. How's your timing, Phil Robertson and Tom Slingsby on board Australia? Ooh, tight at the top. Line's clear there. Great start by Robertson. Great start by Seb Schneider on board the Swiss boat. And I think that inside line's going to see the Swiss lead us round Mark 1 here in San Francisco. Tight racing at the top of the fleet. And there you see New Zealand, France, and Great Britain. They are in the back, six legs ahead. This race will go fast as the wind is up as they approach mark number one, high speeds across the board. Oh, the speculation in the weeks leading up to this, Todd. Would Ainsley on board Great Britain be aggressive with De La Pierre? Well, the question's answered. He's already rattled the cage. And can they chase their way back through the fleet now? On board with the Australians. Slings be there. He's talking about being in trouble. He's on the outside of the wheel. That boundary is approaching quickly. He's not in control of his decision. He's closest to the San Francisco shore. He'll have to dive behind the other boats when he turns. And there you go. Seb on board the Swiss boat first to turn away. And Australia are well out of the picture there. And in the background on the right-hand side, Great Britain first to turn away, along with the Australians. And he's in a big dark patch of water on board the British boat. Look at his speed increase at the top of the mast there. Let two of six here, race number one. We've got three races for you today. So when they next turn here, we're setting up for a turn on board Great Britain. They'll have the right of way once they complete this turn. Here they go. He's already showing us in fifth. He's going to come back at the pack. If he's close, he'll have the right of way. Jimmy Spittle matches his manoeuvre. And those two boats are the big gainers early on in this leg. Live speeds here from the top three boats. 66 kilometres an hour from the Swiss team, equivalent to 40 miles per hour. So it's Switzerland out in front, Australia, Denmark, USA, and Great Britain. Emirates GBR in fifth. Remember, they're locked in a battle with France for the third and final position as the France have now moved up to seventh. Right-hand side of the screen, and the Spanish have fallen off the, stales, off the foils in that manoeuvre. That's opened the door for the French. They're going to have a clean run into gate two. Ainsley on board the British boats in the pack. It's always harder when you've got boats surrounding you, less options. But the ruse, look at Tom Slingsby on board Australia, defending champion. He's pushing so hard to take the lead as we approach gate two and New Zealand at the moment back in eighth place. They can't afford to spend the weekend there. 
Off. Looks like the Australians might make it in one. That would give them the lead here, Todd. Okay. Only the top three teams on Sunday afternoon will battle it out for the $1 million. It's Australia now in first place. The two-time reigning and defending champions, the first to gate number two. And then the rest of the fleet, Stevie, opts for the other side. Yeah, well, Tom Slingsby was saving manoeuvres. He split away. It was more simple for the Swiss. We're going to learn a lot about the race course in the next one minute. It's so tight there. Canada dive inside Ainsley and all that good work. Well, he's back in the pack on board Great Britain and New Zealand. They're making a move on the French. There's clearly the pressure showing. New Zealand, France and Great Britain, they're making mistakes early in the race here. And which side of the course is going to have more wind? Looks pretty good on board Australia. Those ladder lines on the course there show the Australians with a 150 meter lead already over the Swiss. Big gain potentially for Australia. That could be good news for New Zealand and France who turned right. Great Britain, they're on the side of the course that at the moment seems to be losing. On to leg number three, we check in down on the water with Lisa Dormanen. Well, first of all, it's pretty tricky to match race in these conditions because it's so different across the course. We saw the Spanish, they fell off the foils. They had a bad manoeuvre, but there's huge light spots out here. That's what we call holes. So the teams are really going to have to avoid the holes and find that pressure out here. And Stevie, you notice right off the bat, everyone's sitting down low in the cockpit. Yeah, well, that's Tom Stings be pushing the rules. I think he's got to be sat on the side to fit with the rules there. It'll be interesting uh, to know what he's thinking. He's trying to reduce the windage on board there. And we see now Great Britain and New Zealand, they're coming together on the left-hand side of our screen. New Zealand have to keep clear. That's really tight moment in the race there by Burling. Could be interesting to see what happens there, whether Ben Ainsley chooses to go to the umpires. And the French, they're right back with the Emirates Great Britain crew as well. <laughs> It's great to see Australia out in front, but the action for this place in the final is taking place right in the pack as France are chasing down the British. It's really important here to keep an eye on the speeds and the top of the masts of each of the boats. We're seeing quite a few of the numbers dropping below 30 kilometers an hour, which means the boats are touching down in these maneuvers. And that is critical if they want to stay ahead of the other teams. Beautiful shot of Emirates GBR with the San Francisco skyline in the background. Remember, they are one point out of making it to the final. They need to beat France over these five races over the next two days. And look at this, France flying the hole, and I don't know if that's intentional. No, that's a mistake, Todd. They've turned the boat. They were... Uh, penalty Canada, relative France, uh, port tech boat. Keeping clear. Oh, that's what wow, that's obviously a tight maneuver that took place off our screen. It forced the French into a really bad turn. They're turning through the wind. Here we are coming back on board the French boat. He's had to suddenly turn the boat. They see the French. The guy's oh, he's trying to dive out the way of Canada. There, look at that. Turns the boat away from the wind. They fall off the foils. What a moment there. That's so unfortunate for the French. So Content Delapierre gets it back under control as we are leg three of six, race number one. We've got three races for you today. It's the Australians out in front, Switzerland and the USA. Top three right now, the big battle though, Great Britain and France. Yeah, what a moment that was. That's the, the French have lost some 200 meters relative to Great Britain in that one incident that wasn't their fault. How costly is that going to be? Ainsley showing us fifth on board Great Britain and the French back in seventh. That could be absolutely crucial as we see at the moment. Switzerland and Denmark doing a nice job up towards the front of the fleet, but well, Australia knows how to sail away from the fleet, that's for sure. Some really impressive speeds on that upwind from Australia, averaging 58 kilometers an hour of average speed, while the Swiss and USA in second and third were down at 55. The two-time reigning and defending champion Aussies out in front here. What a way to start race number one, day number one here of the Mubudla Sail GP season three grand final here in San Francisco. Oh, another really tight incident to the right of our this screen. Is the umpires, penalty USA, uh, relative Denmark, port tack boat not keeping clear. Oh, these are basic mistakes, really. They're trying to push the limit. We know that, of course they are. But again, another door opens for Ainsley. Could be up to third here. Jimmy Spiddle's going to have to drop back behind Denmark. Here we go. We're on board the USA. To the left of the screen would be the Danish. Jimmy Spiddle just can't see them, I don't think. Here, look. See him. Sorry for the language we heard there, but they just didn't see him. We heard that. He's on port tack. If you're on port tack, wind coming over the left-hand side of the boat, that means you haven't got the right of way. And here we go. On board Denmark. This is a near miss. Sehested. Oh, he 
just spins the boat so late, has to try and keep clear. He shouldn't have to keep clear. That's up to Jimmy Spittle. And the voice we did hear minus the language was Craig Mitchell, the chief umpire. So he doles out the penalty to the Americans who have to drop behind Denmark. They now sit in sixth place. And look at this shot. What's wrong with this so shot? You don't see Australia anywhere on screen. <laughs> They're down the road as a Switzerland having a great race. I think what's crucial here, Ben Ainsley, it's like Moses parting the Nile, isn't it? He's just sailed through the whole fleet. Everyone making mistakes around him. I'm not sure he sailed a great leg, but he's not made the big mistakes. Canada forced that error onto the French. This could be pivotal so early on in this regatta. There you see the wind at the top of the screen. 25 kilometers an hour. Lisa Darmanin reporting down in the water. The wind has gotten very light as of late. So this is much different, Stevie, than we saw yesterday in practice when the speed of the wind was closer to 30 kilometers an hour. Yeah, the wind's coming off that San Francisco shoreline, so it's changeable. It's up and down. When we get the helicopter view, if you're new to sail GP, you'll see darker patches of water, and that's what Tash Bryant in the back there, she's looking around behind her. She's trying to see that texture on the water, establish where there's more wind. And if you put yourself in more wind, you're going to be going faster. And tactically, that's normally not a bad place to start your decision making. Look at the lead that Australia has in first place. They're almost to gate number four. Switzerland, the top of your screen, currently sits in second place technically, but it looks like Great Britain may have them on distance. Yes, they are into second now. So they'll make their way back up onto leg five, and then it'll be a short blast to the finish line. Stevie, it's almost unforeseeable that Australia doesn't get this first race win. Yeah, I think from here I'd be very surprised if it wasn't the case. Switzerland and Great Britain. Great Britain has the right of way. If it's tight, Switzerland must keep clear. Looks pretty tight to me, but I think the Swiss could be clear ahead here. Ainsley and Great Britain sets up for one more turn. They're going to try and dive inside late on in the leg here. Can they execute this perfectly? Swiss should be round. Swiss yep. enter the circle first. They're clear ahead. They own the mark. But Ainsley up to third top. Yeah. What a performance. Well, this is huge. If Great Britain can end up in front of Switzerland, finish second in this race, and France, who's currently in seventh, Stevie, they will have dug themselves a hole on race number one. I think the Canadians dug the hole for them, to yeah. be perfectly honest, Todd. They, they caused that error. It wasn't really Contant's fault. He had the right of way. He's going to be livid, but he's got to reset. Plenty of races left. Quick summary from that last leg, and we can see that Australia still have that fastest speed, but no wonder GBR caught up. Significant difference in the distance sail, 200 metres less than Australia and Switzerland, closing that gap. So the French get a spot on that turn, getting ahead of the Americans. They're up to sixth now as Emirates GBR moves into second place. No, still holding in third with Australia leading. This will be the last upwind leg, and then it'll be a left-hand turn to the finish line. Yeah, just a couple more decisions left here. The Swiss have positioned themselves nicely. If Great Britain were to turn, they would have to make sure they kept well clear of Switzerland. I'd anticipate two more manoeuvres for each crew. It's going to come down to good execution. But this British boat, look, they're hanging in there speed-wise. They're trying to close the gap to the Swiss. But at the moment, control with Schneider on board the Swiss boat. Ben Ainsley trying to put points between him and Quentin Delapierre in France. And right now, Great Britain sits in third. France sits in sixth. Here we go, Australia, top right of screen. They've turned, they're going to be approaching the final turn in Mark now. You can see the wind looks quite light near that San Francisco shoreline. Great Britain turn, Switzerland match. Really interesting numbers here of the boat position from Mark 1 till now. Notice that our top three teams, none of them had a brilliant start. Mark 1, Australia in fifth, sailed through the fleet up into first. Meanwhile, GBR, we saw their start wasn't great. They're off the bat with French, sailed through the fleet. None of them in top three positions at mark number one, and now they hold down positions one, two, and three. So it's Australia with a massive lead. They'll come up on another gate. Then it's Great Britain now just edging ahead of Switzerland, who sits in third. Yeah, and it's Great Britain now with control tactically. They're allowed to turn to their left, so it looked like it was turning to the right on our screen, as and when they want, and they'll be able to force the Swiss away. Could be a second place for Great Britain here at the finish. Good control for Ainsley. That's the voice of Ian Jensen, the wing trimmer I'm hearing there. We can turn when we want. They've got the right of way here. Here goes Hannah Mills, strategist. They're setting up for that final turn. You climb pretty hard here, everyone. Sorry. She talks about climbing. They've just been sailing closer to the wind across there. You can sail closer to the wind and go a bit slower to position yourself tactically better. And Stevie, talk about what Ben Ainsley said right after her. He said, we're going in high mode. Explain what that means which means they're going to try and sail closer to the wind. In sailing, you can either sail closer to the wind and go faster, 
and it's the Aussies who sneak away and get the win in race number one. Yeah, you can go close to the wind, Todd, and sail slower, but less distance, or you sail a little bit further away from the wind, you'll go faster, but you've got to sail more distance. That's the maths you're always trying to do, and right now, Ainsley has done them pretty well to move himself up through the fleet. So the Australians pull away from everyone, a massive lead. They get to the finish line while some great battling taking place. And it is Emirates GBR. Great Britain will come into second place as they put distance on the Swiss who sit in third. So this is where we got to get very interesting with the math. Where does France end up and how much of a point lead will GBR have heading into races two and three? Well done for Ben Ainsley and crew. They did exactly what they had to do. Would have loved to have gotten the win, but Stevie, this is good. They put points between them and the French, and that is mission number one. Yeah, that's all that matters for them really here, beating that French crew. I don't know that, uh, don't know as the Swiss come in here in third place. Grace result yep. for them, and New Zealand have climbed through the fleet. Look like they should get fourth. I think the French, they're going to be disappointed, but they shouldn't be too discouraged. They actually sailed back very close to the British there. And then, well, as I say, it was the Canadians got in the way, taking on the role of disruptor there as we see New Zealand fourth. Denmark bringing it home here in race one in fifth place. And the French, they're going to get a sixth. Not disastrous for Delapierre, but next race is going to need to be a good one. USA will come in seventh after a pretty solid start for the Americans. And then it's Canada and Spain bringing up the rear. The Canadians being involved in that fracas with France, which really caused them a big setback, Stevie, at that point of the race. Yeah, huge. I mean, the, the Canadians didn't have the right of way. They had to, they had to keep clear of uh, of the French boat. They didn't. It made the French fall off the foils, and that was disastrous. It's interesting, I think, in this. I think the wind's very changeable, so the boats are changing direction. The situation's changing, and there's been a lot of people not seeing other boats. Now, fundamentally, that's really important. Some of the teams might have to think about where they put the strategist. Do they put the strategist on the other right. side of the boat, give themselves more viewing? It's not as good for performance, but if you're going to not be able to see the other boats, that's a bigger problem. Phil Robertson in Canada coming off a big win. The last event, they will take eight and ninth will go the way of Spain and Diego Botin. So a quick reset for everyone. Take a look and have a debrief, Stevie, of what you did right and what you did wrong. But, man, plenty to fix for France, USA, and some of their squads. But the Australians, the two-time reigning and defending champions, they put on an absolute master class. So let's take a look at the results from race number one. Australia gets the win and the 10 points, and this is important. Emirates GBR gets nine points. France gets five. So already Emirates GBR has a lead. Can they do it back to back in race two? A throwback to the start here, and we see what I call some chaos tactics going on. Some aggressive maneuvers, maneuvers by GBR at the start to slow France down and push them out the back. Meanwhile, at the top, Canada was early, so decided to slow down the Australians, Danish, and Spanish. This then left that door open for USA and Switzerland to sneak through just before the gun. Ultimately, the start wasn't critical, but it highlights how well the Aussies and Brits sailed to move through the fleet. Well, yeah, here we are on board the French. We can see they got right back into the race. They were sailing well. Look how close they are there with Emirates GBR. It was a tight moment in the race, but then the next maneuver, they turned the boat, and then suddenly the Canadians were in their way. They had to force a turn out the way. This was not, not how the French normally sail. Disaster for Dillapierre. They got to hit control, alt, delete, and get ready for race two, because they're going fast when they're free. So Australia gets the win in race number one, the first race of three today on day number one. Tom Slingsby and his crew, the two-time defending and reigning champions, we go on board with them. Tom, congratulations. What a way to start the Mubudla Sail GP Season 3 Grand Final. You guys are the two-time reigning and defending champions. You looks like you mean business on pulling off the hat trick this year. Yeah, obviously that's the goal. Uh, we've been... Uh... Yeah, we got a training day yesterday and uh, got a bit of a warm-up. We weren't too slick yesterday, but um, obviously the training helped for that first race. All right, Tom, we appreciate your time. We'll cut you loose and let you get ready for race number two. So it is the Australians that get the win, and they put themselves in prime position. They didn't need the points, but they got the points. So it's Australia setting the early standard. Can France, can Emirates, GBR, New Zealand answer the bell when we come back for race number two?
I do feel like if Ben does make the final, you're going to have Pete and Tom with a rivalry that's been developing all year. And I just can't help but think Ben's going to, you know, slide in and, and steal a victory that has looked really unlikely all season. People ask me, who would you prefer in the final? Who would you prefer to race? And I naturally say, oh, look, I think we'd prefer France in there. You've got a young guy who doesn't have the experience compared to Ben Ainsley, who's performing under pressure a lot of times. But I actually don't know because Quinton has come out and blitzed us in multiple events and he's shown that when he's on, he's on. I think Quentin is the most impressive sailor in, in Sail GP right now in terms of coming into a new team that was on the back foot massively, turning things around, you know, in terms of showing the maturity to lead the team and the performance on the water. I stand by what I said. I think it's one of the most impressive things I've seen in sailing. I'm gonna I just keep looking at the, the performance data and it doesn't lie. You know, Ben, they are without question one of the fastest boats in a straight line. The meters lost per maneuver, they're always, you know, losing the least. We're a very proud maritime nation. Success in sailing, it's really important to us, you know, going way back to the history of, of sailing in Britain. And Sail GP is the new frontier in sailing, so it's a big responsibility for us to lead the way to try and be the top team, the most successful team in Sail GP, and to get consistency to keep that going and keep going and keep going. This is our chance to set those foundations for the long term, and that's what we're going to try and do. Well, we can expect more of the same for race number two, which means that the course is still wide open. I'm not seeing a pattern emerging. What I'm seeing is lots of gusts out here, lots of shifts available. So teams can move through the fleet, and I think that that is really powerful um, out here. The other thing is there's lots of clouds around, and the, and the wind is sort of pulsing with that. So right now there's more breeze than we saw at the end of last race, uh, but it, it could change throughout the day, so I'll keep you updated. All right, thank you, Lisa. Although we may be coming up a little bit short of making the grand final, it's been a memorable season for both Denmark and Canada, with the Canadians winning the last event in New Zealand and the Danes showing great improvement from season two. And high hopes to make a move up the leaderboard in the upcoming season number four. So congratulations to both of those teams on a great season three here in Sail GP. One title has already been decided in season three, and that is the trophy for the Impact League, which measures each team's performance over the season on reducing their carbon footprint at each stop and around the globe, and their sustainability efforts on behalf of the planet. The title this year goes to Denmark Sail GP as the Danes unseat New Zealand as the best team in Sail GP's sustainability program. We're super happy and super proud to, to win the Impact League. It's something we really worked hard on. I think the proudest initiative we've done is, is more speed, less plastic. I think we, it's, it's, it's very easy to understand for everyone, and, 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 and we are doing a physical change there by removing plastic from the oceans, and, and the ocean is something we all care about a lot. Really putting a focus on the fact that we do what we can to race as fast as possible, but at the same time, we are, it's possible to help saving the ocean. The, the prize money will go to our, our partner, One Ocean Foundation. We can't say too much because we have an Impact League coming up in next season as well, so what we're going to spend the money on, we'll, we'll have to see next, next season. Going from last, last season and then up to the win this season, it's just, it's huge for us. The Inspire Racing Champions from each event this season have gathered here in San Fran to race the best of the best in their own grand final. The Wasp Racing has been on fire today with plenty of foiling action. All 17 sailors have been training hard all year for this opportunity. Currently overall, Stella of New Zealand leads Bermuda's Rachel by five points in the girls' fleet, while Gavin Ball has a strong lead in the boys' fleet. Today, the overall victor will be crowned. All the excitement out on the water.
So the Wasp put it on a great show for the fans here in San Francisco on day one of the Mubud LaSalle GP Season 3 Grand Final. And the pre-start is underway, under 2.40 to go before the start of race number two. So the Australians get the win, GBR and Switzerland, Stevie, the top three. It'll be interesting to see if they mix it up in the pre-start for the second race. Todd, look at the left-hand side of the screen there. France and Great Britain locked together, two minutes 20. Ben Ainsley is on a mission to get under the skin of Quentin de la Pierre in these pre-starts. We've seen this. He's won Olympic gold medals with this same strategy. He's not afraid of going head to head. And at the moment, he's got the French locked. He's got them, we call it hooked. He's in underneath them. The French can't turn down towards Great Britain. Both of them are near stationary here. Next moves Quentin de la Pierre, but it's not gonna be easy to get out of this. This is aggressive stuff from Ainsley and he's gonna have de la Pierre rattled. So the big question with under two minutes to go before the start of race number two, Emily, is this Ben Ainsley looking for the knockout punch on Quentin de la Pierre on the second race? I'm not sure if I'd call it a knockout punch, but he's definitely trying to slow him up as much as possible and take every single point he can from him. Look at this. At the moment, they're both going backwards here. The French have managed to make their boat turn away. Expect to see Ainsley try and turn to his right. The French are now already late in the pre-start here. Great Britain will be a bit late. Try the same again. <laughs> we certainly did that. I think that must have been from a few seconds ago because he definitely got the French stopped and slowed up. There you go. France, they're going to be late now here. New Zealand, they're coming into the start line and back in a normal sort of strategy. Tom Slingsby on board Australia. He's going well as we see teams setting up for the start. <laughs> De La Pierre there. He's just being dictated to by Great Britain at the moment. None of this is his plan, Tom. So he talked about getting higher in the box, Stevie, and we've seen all kinds of different strategy play out yesterday during practice. Boundary penalty, Australia. Oh. oh, he's pushed too far outside the box there. That's a bit of a silly mistake. He's going to have to try and turn the boat twice to clear that penalty. We'll look to see if the P drops off there. As we see France, the whole fleet is going right to left. France are going left to right on our screen, but they are higher in the box. They're further upwind. They're closer to the Golden Gate Bridge. They've managed to get space. They could have saved their start here. They will have a fast angle towards Mark 1, but Ainsley on board GBR are well lined up. Canada again, Phil Robertson, well lined up. It's all about timing now. Denmark are early. We're going to see the red line in the middle of our screen there turn white when we're good to go. It's all about timing now. France are well lined up. Ainsley's well lined up on Great Britain. How's the timing? Perfect start there. Ainsley on board. Gremlitz, Great Britain out the middle of the line. Seb Schneider again brilliant, but De La Pierre's in the race this time. Great save by the French crew there, but it should be Ainsley leading at Mark 1. How high are they going to dare fly their boat? NASCAR on water here in San Francisco as they are three wide as they approach mark number one. This is race number two. And how did Ainsley pull this off? Look at this. Great comeback. The Swiss have managed to hang in there, but they're very soon going to get disturbed wind from the British boat. The British boat have got to keep clear. The Swiss have the right of way here. It's a tight moment in the race. Ainsley's around the front on board Remerick's Great Britain, and they're going to be able to sail away now. They can make their own decision. Swiss, first to turn away to clear their win. New Zealand have already turned away. Another poor start for Burling. He's going to need to sharpen his race game up a little bit here. They won't be happy on board that Kiwi boat, but out in front, Great Britain are extending away as the French turn near the San Francisco shoreline. Identical race course from race number one, which saw the Australians, Great Britain and Switzerland, your top three. New Zealand finished in fourth, Denmark in fifth, and France back in sixth. Remember, France and Great Britain are locked in a battle for the third and final overall position to go to the grand final. And here we've got our live speeds. Our lead team's doing 70 kilometers an hour in this downwind, so in good pressure for the time being. And almost more importantly at the moment, the wind has rotated to the right. We can see the boats are nearly sailing straight down the ladder lines, and that's only more good news for the British crew as they're lining up themselves well for gate two already here. They're going to extend away as we see the USA maneuvering close to the boundary here. Jimmy Spitto in fifth, still in that mid-fleet pack. He'll be hoping to turn it on for the home fans. The Americans looking to do something that they haven't done in a while. That's win the event. Now, they have no shot of getting to the grand final, but winning on home waters would be huge for Jimmy Spithill and company. Pretty would. 
Yeah, I think that's Contan there. He's saying we've got to attack, we've got to push. That means flying the boat high out the water. Emily always tells us that from the day, to fly the boats high and you're going to get these things going a lot faster. But that comes with a level of risk, but he's got no choice but to take some risk now, Todd. This is the time to do it. And we've also got to remember, New Zealand still haven't qualified right. for this grind final, so they are involved in this. And if Quinton can at least get some places on the Kiwis, yeah. you never know. Coming to this event, New Zealand was sitting on 73 points, France was sitting on 69 points, Emirates GBR on 68 points. So those are really the three boats involved in that battle. Heard Hannah Mills is there, the strategist on board Emirates Great Britain. She likes the wind close to that San Francisco shoreline. That's good news for them as France are following towards San Francisco there. They obviously all see more wind on that side of the course. And if you get more wind, you're just going to get the boat going a lot faster. Look there, top left of screen, the ride height. But it's just changed on board Great Britain because they turned the boat. But it's consistently been the highest flying boat on the race course. Luke Parkinson, flight controller, doing his thing. So I guess the question would be, Stevie, if everyone sees wind closer to shore, then why do the Americans, the Australians, the Spanish, and the Danes go to the other side? It's the eternal question. We see here that dark patch of water on the top left of our screen. That is what the sailors are looking for. That's the impact of the wind. If you're behind and you're going to follow in dirty wind, well, even if you're sailing towards more wind, you're going to be slower. So it's always a decision. Do I'm going to lose a little bit of distance following but get more wind, or am I going to split away and hope I can sail at full speed in clear wind and hope that Ainsley and the British crew have made the wrong choice? Emirates GBR leads here, leg three of six. So halfway through, then it's Canada, USA, Switzerland, and France. And the distance that GBR is putting between themselves and France, Stevie, if this continues, this will certainly be the knockout punch. Oh, I mean, this is, uh, this is quite a display so far, Todd. What's really noticeable out there here is just how much faster the British team are going and also how much more time they're spending up in the foils. 99%, so they dropped off for a brief moment. Well, with Canada and France, we saw them down at 97%. France were down at 95% time on the foils. And that's critical. That's just handing away meters every time you touch down off the foils. So guys, how do you explain this? All season, Emirates GBR has been in the running, but they have not won an event after 10 events. If they could pull off here and win the 11th event, plus the big grand finale and the $1 million, Ben Ainsley looks like a genius. Ben Ains, he's always been a pretty good guy at writing his own stories, John, and this would be a great way to write the story as the comeback. He does love a comeback. Now, they've been fast all year. You heard Nathan Outridge in the uh, break there talking about they're the fastest boat, and the French look at them right now. They're off the foils. That green number suggests they're only just going fast enough to foil. It's just pressure. This is just pressure. He's seeing the British boat sailing brilliantly, sailing away. He knows he needs to force things, and it's forcing mistakes. Ainsley is making this happen in the pre-start. They're fast on board Emirates Great Britain, and the French know it. So at the halfway point of race number two, we check in down on the water. Lisa, are they playing it safe here, or do you see some pretty aggressive tactics? Well, this is a little bit different to last race where we saw all those close calls. Everyone's sort of working out a pattern here. The, the, the day is is gusty, but it looks like Ben and Hannah on the back of that British boat are just linking the gusts together really nicely. They're sailing fast, they're sailing less distance, and, and they're certainly making it look easy. Uh, one other thing I'm noticing out here, as the tide increases, it's getting choppier out here, so the flight controllers have to keep an eye out for that. And that, Emily, is going to be difficult for the French who want to fly the boat a little bit higher because with that choppy sea stake, it's going to make it more difficult to handle that boat, correct? Exactly. What we've seen with the French is they sail quite similarly to the Aussies in that they sail the boat very bow down. That means the rudders are that bit closer to the surface of the water. So it's a fast mode, but often it can be a little bit sketchy, especially in choppy sea state, because you risk losing the rudders. Oh, Canada have got to keep clear here. That's too late. That's another mistake by Phil Robertson and his Canadian crew. Oh, imagine that if Australia got involved in a crash and that took them out of the final, Todd. That Australian boat has has to be in working order tomorrow afternoon. Now, he doesn't have the right here. Switzerland has the right. Will Seb Schneider choose to dive inside? Nope. No, not quite Let's close him up enough. the hook. He did. It's really tight in the pack. Oh, America there, United States. Wow, that was so tight. Slingsby, well, he wants to win. We know that. That's how Tom Slingsby's built, but he's got to get to the final. 
as the British boat sails away now and the French, well, they're just stuck back in the pack. This has been an absolute masterclass so far. But Slingsby, well, the ruse in one piece. He's going to be happy with that as we come on board here. Look, they've just manoeuvred Slingsby crossing the boat with this. Canada must keep clear, but they turn way too late. And it's a last minute dive. It's probably Kyle Langford holding the wheel, the wing trimmer. He's probably holding the wheel at that point. Here we go, Canada. Phil Robertson, we can see him looking. He's unsure, turns to the right, then turns to the left. It's all too late on board Canada well they were amazing in Christchurch but that right there they've had two incidents in two races with the main protagonists for the final they affected the French in race one Australia in race two they need to tighten their game up a bit here and the question Stevie how come no penalty I think because as soon as the penalty there's a lead change in the situation Australia were instantly ahead of Canada uh, in that moment so the penalty will have been scrubbed off but of course we can see here that doesn't help Slingsby because Canada are already ahead so that's just a bit of a bit of a <laughs> loophole in our system unfortunately the loophole will have... this is the umpires penalty Switzerland relative Australia a poor attack boat not keeping clear penalty clear yeah, that was when the two boats crossed a minute ago. The Swiss needed to cross safely ahead. They were too close. Australia had to take avoiding action. So Slingsby, he's trying to get himself safely through the event. Still in third, but he's got plenty of action. Everyone's trying to ram him at the minute, Todd. Race number two of three today, and then tomorrow is Championship Sunday. Australia's already in to the grand final. They just need to get that boat in one piece onto the final race tomorrow. Right now it is GBR, and they are riding their own ticket. They are one point back of making the top three, and they are clearly the fastest boat on the water. Out in front, they were in second place in the first race, looking to put a first place on the board as well. And meanwhile, France is back in eighth. 400 meter lead you take that wouldn't you and yeah the French are struggling let's be honest I mean the pressure's just being wound onto them and onto them Canada still in second here I think they probably should have been a bit harsher punished for that incident with Australia but they've played the game they've used the rules perhaps a little bit to their advantage there as they manage to uh, stay in second here Australia though well he's in one piece he's up to third he turns left Canada turns right someone's gonna see more wins someone's gonna make a game it's good news for Slingsby at the moment but the Kiwis, they're noticing them, look, sixth place. They don't seem to be able to get their way through the pack, which is very unusual for them. <laughs> that was a late dive there by the Swiss. Good judgment, I'll put that down. As Season three coming to a conclusion, Stevie, and everyone feeling a little bit froggy here yeah. in San Francisco. Why not take a chance? Yeah. Everyone pretty happy to push. But anyway, it's been a great race so far. Final up win leg here, and look at the French wallowing off the foils. This is disastrous for the French crew. This race has been much more of their own making, but it's all come down to that aggression in the start. I can't help but think that Ben Ainsley has got right under the bonnet of Quentin de la Pierre yeah. and thrown him off his game. We can see here just how well these top three teams are sailing, all averaging over 60 kilometers an hour. The Australians had a really good leg there, trying to close that gap with the British. We can see the gap has decreased. They sailed marginally less distance and slightly faster, but it's not gonna be enough to take the win from the Brits in this. Emirates GBR with a massive lead. There you see them on top, more than 400 meters. Australia sits in second, Canada sits in third, the Americans in fourth, and Switzerland in fifth. But all that matters right now is where is GBR in relation to France? It is first and ninth as it stands on the table. Well, yeah, Great Britain, they'll be winning the regatta after as it stands after right. two races. Long way to go. Let's not forget, if we're French fans out there, there's still a long way to go here, but it doesn't get a lot worse than seeing your main rival leading while you're wallowing out the back of the fleet. So they have got to do something in race three. There's no doubt about that. And for Ben Ainsley, looks to me like being aggressive in the pre-start is a pretty good approach for him because he's put himself in a position where he should be somewhere near the back of the fleet and he's out in front. This is the penultimate leg of race number two. Race number three still to come and that will wrap up day number one. But right now, Ben Ainsley and Emirates GBR doing exactly what they needed to do and they put the pressure on France and France has not been able to respond. Slings be working well on board Australia. There's a tight cross coming with Canada here. We saw one of those a minute ago. It'll be interesting when we go back how that looks, but Great Britain, they're sailing power. Here we go. Great camera angle here. Australia, yes, they are clear ahead. Maybe Phil Robertson thought he'd give him an inch there after that last up win leg. As they cross, you wonder if Tom Slingsby's going to give him a hearty la <laughs> as he goes by. Thanks for nothing, mate. Three, two, one. 
So they make the turn. It is Emirates GBR that will take the win in race number two. And with one more race to go, they are looking fantastic on the first day of sailing here at the Mubudla Sail GP Season 3 Grand Final San Francisco. Race number two goes the way of the Brits. Wow. That was some performance. So now the start will be heavy for this third and final race, and where everyone finishes here will be important because points still at a premium. Canada, they have the right of way here. They're on the inside. Australia must keep clear. He's off the foils. It was a misjudged maneuver by the Australian, and we don't say that very often. Canada have jumped at the opportunity. Nice from Phil Robertson and his Canadian crew. Dive inside there, and they're going to win the sprint to the finish. Has penalty New Zealand uh, relative to Switzerland. Well, that must have been for a cross earlier on in the leg there, so the New Zealand boat has to let the Swiss get ahead of them here on the leaderboard, which could mean another sixth for New Zealand. They're very much in the middle of the pack, and I, I thought after practice they looked really strong. Australia come across the line in third behind the Canadian crew, and yeah, there you go, the Swiss are passed, but for New Zealand it's not going well at the moment. Nope. So the Americans will come in fourth place to go with their seventh in race number one with one more race on the day. The Swiss had a great start once again, and they've got a drag race now to the finish with Denmark for that fifth position. This is big because points are at a premium, but Stevie, the big story out the back is France, and it is Switzerland that gets the edge over Denmark. Yeah, so the story of the day really was how it was going to play out between Great Britain and France in that battle for third place there. And well, there wasn't a lot of emotion when they crossed the finish line, but they looked pretty, uh, pretty good in France, Emily. Well, they need to dive into the data or something, find out how to fix this. Well, what's critical now is that the French are now closer to the Kiwis on points yeah. than they are to the Brits. Oh, yeah, there you go. But I think they've still all got some work to do. I mean, the Kiwis need to step their game up. But for Contan, he probably knows he can expect, expect a bit more attention for Great Britain one more time yep. in this pre-start. Because, you know, the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And that aggressive starting strategy is really working for Ben Ainsley on board Emirates GBR. And Stevie, to your point, for French fans out there, it's not over yet because France still has one more race today and then two more tomorrow. But starting off with a sixth and an eighth, while your main competitor, GBR, goes two and one. Yeah, I mean, not ideal. And we saw the British finish, and we, we heard a little bit on board, but there was no emotion. But I guess that's no surprise, really. Job's not done for the British crew. Ben Ainsley, Hannah Mills, they've been in this position before. They've won all these gold medals. Big, big race winners. They're used to this pressure environment, so they're just ready for the fight. There we go, great camera angle there. That's coach Robbie Wilson there in the grey hat. He's on board talking with Hannah Mills, talking with Ben Ainsley. Some chat there, I imagine, just a bit more of the same. Here are the results. Emirates GBR gets the win. Canada second, Australia third, US and Switzerland the top five. And throwing back to the start, after the drama we saw early on between France and GBR, we saw it continued again here. The French moved to the top of the box to try and get away from GBR, but we can see that gap decreasing quite quickly as they just couldn't stay away from each other. But ultimately, we ended up with a brilliant start from the teams, with Canada, USA and GBR less than half a second behind the line, as you can see here. Well, yeah, it was a great start. It was a very tight start, and well, we're going to luckily to go on board with Ben Ainsley. Ben, it looks like you're having a lot of fun out there today in San Francisco. Yeah, it's great conditions. Uh, pretty challenging, quite puffy, but good, good breeze, and uh, good challenge for all the teams out here. Yeah, and how long, uh, how long have you been planning up this special plan for Contan and the French team? You've been making his day a bit tough so far. Uh, special plans called winging it, I think, <laughs> Stevie. Uh, it's pretty, pretty, pretty fluid out here, I'd have to say. Not ben, just the water, but everything else. Ben, what have you told the team as you get ready for this very important first day of this regatta, and especially on a, a special day for the country with the coronation of King Charles? Yeah, big day for Great Britain. So uh, we're all very proud Brits. and. Uh, yeah, wonderful day, but for us, we just got to focus on the racing here and the team are just really working hard on trying to execute those maneuvers. We had a few wobbles in the first race, 
Uh, we had a much cleaner race that second one, and if we can keep doing that and try and put a bit of pressure on the French when we can, then hopefully we can get the job done. All right, thank you very much, Ben. Wish you the best of luck in race number three. So let's take a look at two races down, and right now it is GBR on 19 points. Australia already into the grand final on 18 points. Switzerland sits in third. Canada, but Stevie, the big story, looked at an eight. France, eight points. They are more than double down from Great Britain right now. Yeah, I think uh, pretty much nothing short of a race win in race three is what the French need right now. I think Emily's point is good. New Zealand in seventh, they're vulnerable if they sit back there. But the French would need to get back into the final, uh, into second place, I think, to be ahead of the Kiwi crew from here. But big turnaround needed by France, and they've got to make it happen now. Well, as we discussed at the top of the show, it's going to be a showdown between France and Emirates GBR for that final spot in the million dollar race on Sunday. And while GBR may currently be on the outside looking in, this team certainly has the talent to take not only the final spot, but also to win the season three championship in this one race winner take all format. So the big question is, how does Content Delapierre respond in race number three and as Ben Ainsley and Amherst GBR continue to put the hammer down and walk away with this one with one more day still to go. So why are Emirates GBR a likely contender for the overall podium? Their Olympic record on paper is unmatched. So Ben Ainsley and Hannah Mills are the most successful individual sailors in Olympic history and have delivered results under immense pressure their entire career. Their weakness, though, is making unforced errors. Penalty GBR. This season, it's plagued their scorecard. Look at the distraught faces on the British boat. Massive mistake by Great Britain! <laughs> This team has performed in every aspect of the sport and combined, they're without doubt capable of making it into the final. One more race to go on this first day in San Francisco. And if you're looking for a team with swagger and a bit of momentum, look no further than France Sail GP. Currently holding down that third and final spot still, but can their driver, Content Delapierre, deliver in the critical moments like right now on the biggest stage? France come into the critical end of the season with a second event victory, on form and now third overall on track to make the grand final. But what's the reason for their success and why should they stay on the podium? Driver Quentin Delapierre has them laser focused on consistency with a shared responsibility to lead this team. With an Olympic campaign under his belt, he's built a strong team with friend and fellow Olympian Kevin Pepinay, and they're surrounded by a talented set of French sailors. As a team, there's no standout rock star, and perhaps this works well in their dynamic. There's a group of Olympic, offshore and inshore sailors who are all used to competing with different crews aboard different racing machines. One more race to go, and it is Emirates GBR in control and out in front under five and a half minutes until the third and final race when we come back to San Francisco for the Mubudla Sail GP Season 3 Grand Final here from the Golden State. The wind has dropped off dramatically. Seven seconds to go. It's all about who can get on the foil. The Australians have the speed. There's the start there. Spitting's done a fantastic job again, but who's going to get on the foils first? It's Australia and Tom Slingsby. They're boosting away towards Mark 1. The camera boat in the way of the Japanese here. Kidding me, camera boat. Both boats behind off the foils. Yes! Massive game. 
if I'm honest. That camera boat didn't change the outcome of the start. Nathan Outridge might be looking for excuses. I think deep down he knows that there was no way we weren't going to win that start. We're in the controlling position the whole way. That's the right turn and decide, but they're oh, off the foils. Down. Off the foils here. They've just entered a patch with no wind. Both holes have dropped into the water. This can be disaster for Tom Slingsby. When we saw Tom stopped at the top gate where there was no wind, we all had a hope that we could steal a victory here. At this speed, they're going to close the gap to Australia in no time. I think there's better pressure coming out of there. Yep, getting the pace on here. Yep. I remember looking through the wing and I saw the other two teams on their foils coming at us doing 30 knots of boat speed and we're stopped dead. I remember sitting there thinking, what, what's going on here? This, is, this isn't right. They're all going to have to believe in him and he has to know that to get them up on the foils. All good, eh? Coming good real quick. We saw the gust of wind, we saw it coming, and we said, okay, we've just got to position ourselves perfectly here, and we got back on the foils. And it is Australia that claims the title in 2022. Well, I've been sitting here for about two minutes watching France, France and Everett's Great Britain. They're already getting locked in a fight. I think for the French team right now, the best offense sorry the best defense might be offense so keep your eyes peeled on that I think that the French team have nothing to lose right now they've got to go in and attack Ainsley because he knows that they are coming for him so you guys have an, another exciting start on your hands and I'll throw it over to you to take us through it all right, thank you very much, Lisa. 2.30 to go now until the final race of the day. And then remember, two more fleet races tomorrow before the big grand final. And that's where the top three teams will battle it out for this season championship. And oh, by the way, $1 million. So 2.15 now to go here in the San Francisco Bay before we start race number three. Here we go, Todd, on the moment right of way with France. Ainsley on board, Great Britain needs to know he's clear ahead. Oh, it was a tight moment in the pre-start on those two boats. We see there the Rolex countdown coming into the start here. One minute 54 till the start. And this fight has been underway for about three minutes here. And, well, you could certainly feel like at the moment like Ben Ainsley's living rent-free in yeah. Fontan de la Pierre's head because he has got right under his skin. He's got him fired up, and this is on. As we see now, Great Britain, he turns back towards the French already here. They're already in the joust, fighting away at each other. The French must keep clear. They're a bit better set up on board the French boat with 1 minute 30 to go here. But Ainsley's not giving up the fight. He turns to hunt him down, and he's going to chase him to the back of the start box. Okay, there you go. Lucky there's a bit of translation up there for us. He wants to have that inside position. That gives a shorter distance to Mark 1. But I think right now it's just, can I be anywhere near the start line without Ben Ainsley breathing down my neck? And he's still chasing him on board Emirates Great Britain. Stevie, do you think there's any way Contan Delapierre did not anticipate Ben Ainsley racing him this hard? I think he would have 100% anticipated it, but I don't think he would have anticipated how early in the pre-start yeah. Ainsley's been chasing him. And right now, if you're the chaser on board Emirates Great Britain, you've got a brilliant opportunity to push the French back here. He's got good control. France is at the moment trapped. Start line to the left-hand side here, and from this position, Ben Ainsley could quite easily stop the French boat even starting the race. He can't turn down at the moment. Total control with Ainsley on board Great Britain. It's Great Britain and France. This is a huge battle. 20 seconds to go. Great Britain will have a better start than the French from here. Now the French are free, but they're already out the back. Here we go. They wind it up. Australia, United States are well positioned. Burling on board. New Zealand is in a good position, but the story's out the back. Ainsley wins another start over Contan de la Pierre. It's a masterclass. Oof. So Australia, Denmark with the best starts, Canada on the nearest part of the screen, a good one as well, as they race off now to mark number one. This is the third and final race today, and then two more tomorrow. 
Canada and Australia. We've seen that battle. Tom Slingsby might be a bit nervous about having the Canadians that close to him. They're going fast, pushing hard here on board the Roo. No let up from this Australian crew, but it's Canada first at Mark 1. Expect an early manoeuvre here from the French and the British crew run across the boat. They're going to turn as well. They split away from the fleet, but Canada and Australia, they move away. As look at that, Ainsley wow. turns, anticipates the manoeuvre of the French. He's absolutely reading the French playbook here and he's just put himself straight in front of the French. No overtaking opportunity right now for the French as Australia stretch out towards the San Francisco shoreline. Australia, Canada, Denmark, USA, the top four. Spain now just moves into fourth with the USA in fifth. New Zealand in sixth, so they aren't having a great first day. This is impressive, the way Ben Ainsley Emily has handled the French on these first three races. I think particularly there, what was really noticeable was just how quickly they got up to speed out of that manoeuvre. We had a simultaneous manoeuvre between the British and the French. The French dropped down to 50 kilometres an hour and it took them a good 15 seconds to build, while the British managed to do it in half the time. The reason Ben Ainsley's as big a name in sailing as he is and why he's a lot of people's idols, in 2000, he took out the Brazilian reigning gold medalist completely in this kind of one-on-one -on -one situation, a race within a race, if you like. There's two boats racing, but there's there's 10 out there, but there's a private race happening. Ainsley's the master of this situation. He's built a career on it. He's built a reputation on it. And now Contan, well, his hero's doing it to him. So I guess that's a compliment, but it's a pretty painful one at the moment. Australia now out in front with Canada, Spain. We'll keep our eyes on Great Britain and France. It's Great Britain in fourth, France in seventh, and New Zealand not out of the woods either. They're in sixth. What about everyone else? What about everyone else? Good question, Tom yeah, Slingsby. These last two races, he's been really looking faster on board that Australian boat, but he'll want a win to round off the day on board the route, no doubt about that. Third place already for Great Britain after the start. They're in a tricky little spot off the side of the course there. More importantly, 150 metres, according to our ladder lines, ahead of the French. And New Zealand out the back, they're dropping back here, and we know they can't afford to lose points, Emily. They definitely can't, but look at GBR, they're 50 kilometers an hour average speed at the moment. Slightly faster than the Canadians were at that point, but the speeds are so up and down today, just showing how big these little gusts and lulls are. Great Britain turns right, they're in third place. They're choosing to find some space. Oh, it's Canada jump off the foils there. It's really tight and the French are forced to follow. It's just playing out perfectly yep. for GBR here at the moment. But New Zealand, well, they need to make something happen because Ainsley at the moment, he's in space. He's up to third from having started out the back. That British boat, well, I don't know. They've eaten their wheat bix this morning, that is for sure. <laughs> Australia, Great Britain now, one and two. Canada, Denmark, Spain, and France in sixth. New Zealand, guys, is a shocker for me. They are back in seventh. They are sitting second overall in the overall standings, but they're not, they're not guaranteed to spot the grand final just yet. No, they're not. New Zealand need to step this up a little bit here. I mean, obviously, they're going to be helped out by the fact that at the moment uh, it's a problem for the French and they're not doing well. But Ainsley, he's up to second here. He's sailing the boat. He's got a good angle. He's progressing up the ladder line well. So that means he's got a good wind shift chasing down the Australians, but some 120 metres back. And we know even at this stage, eyes of Hannah Mills, the strategist, yep. are going to be looking backwards at that French boat to make sure there she is looking around. Where are the French? Where are the French? That's uh, Ian Jensen there. He's talking about talking about where they are on the course. Hannah Mills talking about the wind. So Ben Ainsley's got a lot of information being fed to him, and then all that information he gathers from Ian Jensen and from Hannah Mills, he'll process it, he'll make a decision, and they'll execute it. Leg three of six, the halfway point of the final race of the day as we check in down on the water and Lisa Darmanin. Well, I definitely think that that left-hand side, where all those spectators are, that shore side, is, is where the best wind is. So I think the teams are trying to get there. It's just trying to find their best path there. The other thing is to really point out is the Australians, they, you know, they're locked in that final, but they want to come out here. They want to win races. They want to get the confidence to go into tomorrow. And the Kiwis right now are not doing that. So that's a really interesting observation from out here for me. Uh, no question about it, Lisa. Right now it is Australia way in front, trying to send a message. Remember, they won the first race of the day. Emirates GBR won the second race, and they are sitting one and two here in race three. Okay, no 
And France, Stevie, is in eighth or seventh now. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're just getting put at the back of the pack. And as soon as you're at the back of the pack, your options are limited. You know, you can have a strategy. But Ainsley said it, said it well. You can yeah. have a plan, and everyone's got a plan until you get punched in the face. At the moment, on every start, Ben Ainsley punched him in the face. I didn't know Mike Tyson was a sailor. No, well, I think he's going about it a bit more uh, intelligently than Mike Tyson might in a boat. But it's certainly, at the moment, the plan's just been knocked out of the French. Quite literally, the wind has yeah. been taken out of their sails. When you're at the back of the pack, the whole fleet is blocking the wind. It's challenging your decisions but Ainsley somehow on board this British boat is able to get in clear space and then start making his own decisions again and that's what he's done a brilliant job of here. The deal is not done they are not in just yet but what a way to start even if they finish second place in this race today that would give Emirates GBR a first and two seconds that's a lot of points. Some brilliant sailing by the Australians here. We know they're through to the final, but what we also know about them is that they excel when they don't have other teams around them. And right now, both the Australians and the British are sailing in clear open space, but the Australians are two kilometers an hour faster on average than the Brits. In 24 hours, this race will be a three-boat race, and they'll be racing for a million dollars. And Tom Slingsby, what I love about Tom Slingsby and that Australian crew is he openly describes himself as a confident sailor. And there's nothing going to make you more confident than this kind of performance. It's tight at the top here, but clear crosses there. And still on the upwind leg is France as Great Britain are off the screen, heading away in second place. I mean, it's so tight, but Tom Slingsby, he needs this confidence. He could just cruise out there today, yeah. but he's choosing to take it on. He wants to win the regatta here. Here, the Mubadjala Sail GP here in San Francisco, but he also wants to then set himself up well to be confident for that final. And if I'm on New Zealand, sat in fifth place in the middle of my screen, what confidence are you getting before this final? They might make it, but they're not sailing well today, Todd. It'll be a winner-take-all race, and the final race tomorrow, as Stevie alluded to, 24 hours from now. Meanwhile, France is trying to find a way to salvage some points. Stevie, if you went on board their boat tonight and back in their shed when they were debriefing, what would you tell that team? Or are we trying to work out how to sink the English? No, I, that's not clearly not the way to go about it. They're going to have to come out tomorrow absolutely on fire. They're going to be left with no choice but to win two races. But the reality of this is Ben Ainsley and Emirates GBR have now put it in their own right. hands. A sensible day tomorrow, and they're in that final three. And, well, you know, everyone's so good. You're in the final three, you're in good shape. Whether we try to lock him off down the bottom here. So what Tom Slingsby wants to do here is he wants to anticipate which way is Ainsley going to turn at number gate number four. So if Ainsley turns left, Spittle, uh, not Spittle, sorry, Tom Slingsby on board Australia will want to go the same way. Because if you keep yourself in the same patch of water, it makes it all a lot easier. So looking forward to the grand final, and this is how the teams would currently qualify. So that would see GBR. Yeah beating France and currently got that five-point difference, so the French really need to get some more places if they want to salvage it. There you go. One last manoeuvre by the Australian, sets himself up to turn left. Probably at the moment it's sensible for GBR to turn left as well. So Slingsby, he's lost a little bit of distance here, but what he's gained is total control. Every time Ainsley manoeuvres from now on, anticipate that Australian boat manoeuvring with him, and Tom Slingsby will be thinking, this is 24 hours time, this is the million dollar final upwind leg, and I'm going to stay ahead of you, Emirates GBR. He has done this moment many times. Tom Slingsby, the two-time reigning and defending champions for the Australian. He could come into a race, barely make a great final, and then walk away with a big prize. That's just how slick he is. So it's Australia, Great Britain, Canada, Denmark, New Zealand, your top five. France has clawed their way up to sixth place, and now they are locked in it with New Zealand. But New Zealand's doing enough here. They're doing this enough. Fires, boundary penalty, Australia. Oh. <laughs> Unforced air on the Aussies. Yeah, I mean, they're pushing that off to the edge of the course. If you can try and stretch the course earlier, you might save yourself a manoeuvre later on, but he didn't need to do that. There's no way of thinking that wasn't unforced. Interesting to see there that Great Britain must have gone very wide as well, but clearly not as wide as the Australians. So a little bit of distance lost. They've got to lose 20 metres relative to their perfect speed. 
but they could probably afford to do that in the end. So the third and final race of the first day here at the Mubadla Sale GP Season 3 Grand Final. It is Australia, the two-time reigning and defending champions. They have taken hold of this one. They won race number one. Race number two went the way of Emirates GBR. They sit, Emirates GBR sits in second place on the right side of your screen, and then everyone else is fighting for the scraps. Yeah. Look at the angle difference here between the Australian boat at the front of the fleet and the Canadian boat halfway down. It's just showing how big the shifts are that the boats can't point in the same direction when they're sailing towards the same point. Yeah, and it's such a tactical, interesting tactical situation. Both the British and the Australians are sailing closer to the wind. They're sailing in that good shift, and that's hurting their speed as well. The one I caught my eye was New Zealand. Lisa told us about the side of the shore near San Francisco being right. good. New Zealand have made a little game with that, but at the moment, well, it's a battle royale out front. Yeah. New Zealand left of the screen in fifth. I wouldn't be at all surprised to see them challenging for third place by the upwind leg here by the next mark five. But, well, with not very much time to go here, one good manoeuvre for Australia, and I think they'll sew up the race. Australia on leg five of six, the final race of the day. They'll come up to the next gate, and then it's a hard left-hand turn to the finish line, and another flyby for the fans here at a sold-out crowd as they will make it two wins on day number one. Remember, they won race number one. Emirates GBR got second on that occasion. Emirates GBR got second in race two, so not a bad day for Ben Ainsley. I mean, it, obviously three first would have been better, Stevie, but a second, a first, and a second, that's money. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think I definitely, if you'd have offered him that at the beginning of the day, especially yep. with where the French have come, he'd have bitten your hand off. So a uh, brilliant day for the Emirates GBR, because it's a sixth and a seventh for France, and there's another sixth looking like it's going to come yep. in here right now. So for Ainsley, it's been, oh, it's just been the perfect day out here. Well, we've always talked about... So a quick JK for Emirates GBR. Stevie, I was going to say, we've said this before, you can't win the regatta on day number one, but you can certainly lose it, and France has certainly dug themselves a hole. Race number three, day number one, goes to the two-time reigning and defending champion, Australia, take it in grand style. Yeah, I mean, that was Ben Ainsley debriefing gate number four there. He was saying what we should have done in hindsight was not just follow the Australians, it was follow them around the mark and instantly turn. So he's already debriefing. But there you go, they'll be happy on board Australia. New Zealand currently showing in third. They've got one more manoeuvre to do, as in second place, rounding out a near perfect day for Emirates GBR. Is there any motion on board that boat? Take that as some form of positive. Right, the right of way is with New Zealand. They're on the inside. They're pushing themselves really slowly in there, but they have the right of way. Where's Denmark going to go here? He's not allowed inside Canada. Canada could shut the door. It's a tight, tight moment. New Zealand will get to the foils first. Now Canada must keep clear of Denmark as they head towards the finish. It's going to be a sprint. New Zealand will come across in third. Great comeback for Burling, and that could nearly cement his yeah. place in the Zealand final. Has penalty, Canada relative Denmark. Winded boat not keeping clear. Tight, tight, tight. Canada are going to have to drop back behind Denmark, so they may cross the finish line ahead, but those results will be will be washed over as France come across in six. Well, not the day that France was looking for, so a six, eight, six. Boat that sounded so calm. I mean, you don't yeah. need to speak French to sort of hear the tone there yep. and know that that's a bit rattled. Tight moment at the back of the fleet. Ooh. Spain dive inside Switzerland at the last minute there. It was a tight, tight move. Diego Botin not afraid to get involved. And it's going to be a race to get on the foils for these two boats here. I think it's going to be a race to get to the showers for the French team yeah. to have a bit of a reset ahead of tomorrow because they've just got to come out all guns blazing and hope for a mistake from Ainsley, which doesn't seem too forthcoming at the moment. USA finishes in seventh, Spain will get eighth, and Switzerland will end up in ninth on the third and final race of the day. So a lot to digest, as Stevie pointed out for the French, a lot to talk about because they're gonna to have to have an absolute stunner day tomorrow and hope that Emirates GBR has all kinds of issues. Coming down here in front of the thing. 
Yeah, what a day. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That was, a, that was a good day's racing. That was some good action there. Aggressive stuff. It's kind of what we want to see in this. I mean, we knew it was going to come down to the Le Crunch, sure. as we say. And uh, great, there's been no damage to any boats. But certainly, that was some performance there for people watching sailing for the first time. That was a pretty good display of aggressive one-on-one -on -one racing within a race by Emirates GVR. And well, our two-time champion, Tom Slingsby, he's probably going to sleep as well as anyone could hope after that last race. So it's the Australians that get the win in the third and final race here in San Francisco. And now they turn their attention to Championship Sunday. Well, here we go in the key moment. It was all before the start. I mean, often these races are done before the start. Top of our screen, just underneath the Golden Great Bridge, we can see Ben Ainsley. He just managed to push the French boat up towards the wind, slow him up. And by the time that Contant de la Pierre got free and could sail away, it was too late. Ainsley was out in front. Somehow they managed to find some space, find some more wind. And well, with the French behind him, Ainsley was free to turn his eyes forward, sail his way through the fleet, but yeah. It was a master class of match racing from the great British driver. So we go down on the water and Australia as they make their way back to the shed. We hope we have a little time to visit with Tom Slingsby, who's got his hands full right now. Tom, if you could hear us. Oh, we're going to go to France instead. Apologies. We'll go on board with France and Content de la Pierre. Content, uh, a rough day for you guys out there. Not the results you were looking for. and It puts a lot of pressure on you for tomorrow. What do you have to tell your crew to get yourselves back in the game? Uh, yeah, disappointing. I mean, uh, uh, it's, it's the sport. And, uh, yeah, for tomorrow, we'll just have to regroup and try to do in races for tomorrow. Um, I mean... We were not um, at a good level uh, today and tomorrow was a day. Content, yeah, it was a, it was a tough day, a big, big lesson. Uh, was Ben Ainsley and the British crew more aggressive than you expected or was that something you had planned for? Uh, no, that was uh, a scenario that we were expecting. Um, I think the, the, the answer was quite good from our side, but on the very last second, um, we, we missed some uh, some good moves on, on him. And uh, and after this, I think that they sailed pretty well in, inside, the, inside the, the playground. So um, yeah, it's a bit of everything today. <laughs> well, Contan, there'll be a lot to learn and uh, good night's sleep and come out fighting tomorrow. And next up, we're going to take a quick look at some of the race stats from that final race and see what made Australia win. So when we take a look at the average speed, the Australians, almost 56 kilometers an hour average speed and up on the foils for 98% of the time. Emirates GBR, another impressive performance, but slightly slower, marginally less distance, but 2% less time up on the foils, which can make that really big difference between first and second. Further down the fleet, France, slower, less time up on the foils. And that was critical out there today. What a day of racing here in San Francisco as we bring down the curtain on season three of Sail GP. And here you go. After three races, Australia and Great Britain atop the board with 28 points, New Zealand. Wow, they needed those points badly and they are in third, 18 for Denmark and Canada. But the big story, Stevie Morrison, France sitting in eighth with only 13 points. They are 15 points back of the team they are fighting with, Emirates GBR. Right now we set it down on the water and Lisa Darmanin. The wind is going to be very similar tomorrow with 22 km per hour winds from the southwest gusting to 30 km per hour. There's a little more left in direction, so it's going to be even more gusty and much more shifty as the wind comes over the hill. We did see that at practice racing and it showed us it's much more of a strategy race than a speed race. It does mean those strategists on the back have a big day ahead of them tomorrow trying to predict what the breeze is going to do. I've seen their role develop massively this season and I spoke to the top strategists earlier this week. 
All right, Lisa, appreciate the information down on the water in the San Francisco Bay. Stevie, one of the trickiest places to race here in San Francisco, but everyone loves it because it's such an iconic setting. Yeah, I think they've all done enough sailing, but the wind is shifty. There's current out there on the water. There's plenty of things going on. And yeah, I mean, for Contan and the French crew, it, it was a tricky day. But but I think what's nice for these top sailors is, is it's a slightly bigger course. Their wind is shifting. It's gusting. So there, there are opportunities to overtake. And, and certainly Australia, Great Britain, New Zealand in that last race showed that they've got that quality to find a bit more wind, to find a good angle that's going to save them a bit of distance and get themselves around that course and overtake other boats, which, let's be honest, it's nothing more fun than watching a race where there are some overtakes. Emily, what should we be looking for for day number two? It's going to be a lot more of the same with those gusts being crucial, and that puts a lot of the pressure on the strategist. As Lisa says, their role has developed so much through this season as the teams have all begun to rely a lot more on that pair of eyes at the back of the boat. And I think that really did make the difference out there today. I feel like this is a statement. This is Tom Slingsby saying, oh yeah, you guys are talking about Emirates GBR and how well they're saying France is a hot team. Let's not forget who's won this circuit two years yeah. in a row, and we're looking to make it three. Yeah, well, he's done the, you know, he's done this twice. They've got so much experience on that. Don't yeah. underestimate Kyle Langford to the left of our screen. You know, you've got Kinley Fowler, Ed Powers. They've all been there and been involved with winning these events, right. and that's a big deal. But when you're dealing with Ben Ainsley, four gold medals, Hannah Mills, two gold medals. The whole British boat is it's a surprise it flies the number of gold medals on board it. And then you've got New Zealand. They've got gold medals yep. on board. They've won events. And, you know, I was bagging them a little bit there. They're up to third overall here. At the moment, the top three yep. are the top three in this event. So, yeah, Slingsby's still the man. There's a lot of golf left in this hole. And remember, it all comes down to the winner-take-all race. Tomorrow will be the final race of the day. How about the shot of the day, Stevie? Let's go back to race number one, Denmark versus a USA. Yeah, I mean, thank goodness there wasn't a collision out there here. We just a few visibility issues for some of the crew. Jimmy Spiddle said he didn't see him here, and he's not got the right of way there. He has to clear right here, of Denmark. To Thankfully, race. Nikolai oh. Sehested had some sharp reactions, spun the boat on a sixpence and avoided a collision. Look at this, watch the crew. They're going to get flung off their feet here. Hold on, Tom Johnson. Whoa, look at that, hanging onto the wire that holds the big wing sail up there. And this was a, well, this was seriously dramatic, but thankfully no one's hurt. Thankfully no boats are hurt. But yeah, he's just got to see there. Jimmy Spittle's opportunity got to keep clear. And uh, well done, Nikolai Sehested. And now you know why when we call them world-class sailors, it's moments like that where they can pull that off. No one gets harmed, no harm, no foul. Well, all to play for tomorrow. The Mubudla Sail GP Grand Final. Three teams. One 10 minute race. Come on, come on, come on, come on. What's on the line? First prize one million dollars. But it's more than money. Everything is on the line. And for Slingsby, making it a hat trick would be extraordinary. So that wraps up day number one of the Mubudla Sail GP Season 3 Grand Final San Francisco. Tomorrow, we will have two fleet races before the grand finale and the $1 million race where only three boats are involved. So on behalf of Emily Nagel, Lisa Darman, and Stevie Morrison, I'm Todd Harris saying so long for now from beautiful San Francisco, California. We'll see you tomorrow. NASCAR on water here in San Francisco. And what a stop! How's your timing, Jimmy? Absolutely on fire. Aggressive racing by AZ. It's really a classic match race maneuver. So unfortunate for the French. He's already rattled the cage. Absolutely perfect. Only the top three will battle it out for the championship.